Well, good day, viewers. Today we have a 2017 Chevy Silverado. It's a 1500 crew cab, and it's here. It was here a few days ago when I did the vent push rod on this thing. It's here because it has a trailer brake system malfunction. It says service trailer brake system, and I believe we had no communication with it, but we're going to start now, scan this thing again, and I guess the first thing to do is check fuses that feed power to the trailer brake control module if there is in fact no communication with it. So let's get started. So as I said, we scanned this a few days ago when we did the vent push rod job on it. There's a previous re repair on this thing, or a previous video on it. And that's when I noticed the service trailer brake message. Let's see what kind of codes it's generating. I think the ABS module was complaining about it, or the uh, BCM was complaining about it. Yeah, the ABS module lost communication with trailer brake control. So we got a U0137. And... Symptom zero zero. Sure, track suggests it's the trailer brake control module is likely at fault, and that's possible, I suppose. But this truck is pretty clean. You wouldn't expect it to be overly corroded underneath there. Five or six years old, seventeen. Any more codes? Not yet. So, it's one of the deep disadvantages to the snap-on scanner is it doesn't have a topology map, so you don't see the modules that don't communicate, and, it, and the way snap-on treats it is if a module doesn't communicate, it acts like it doesn't exist. So we're going to go back, and we're going to pick the trailer brake control module itself. Trailer interface control module and display codes and I predict no communication okay so I'm going to pull up a wiring diagram and see what fuses feed power to the trailer brake control module okay so here's the schematic for the trailer brake control module option JL1 and it shows shows a chassis control module auxiliary with an ignition fuse fuse 34 and then it shows fuse 19 and one directly to the trailer brake control module a fuse 10 30 amp so we're going to check all these fuses they're in the underhood electrical fuse box but I'm just curious if we got communication with the chassis control module let's try that chassis control module auxiliary no communication all right let's find these fuses and check them so it's fuse 34 19 and 1 and in the underhood electrical center those are the fuses one is a 30 amp uh, J case fuse so that's this one here so I got to take it out to check it but 19 is this 10 amp fuse and we can see that that's good and 34 is this 15 amp fuse you see that that's good so I'm going to remove this J case fuse and test it So I physically removed this J case fuse and tested with an ohmmeter and has continuity through it. There's power to this pin on this one. Um, it can't test it on top. So theoretically the fuses all test good. Let's put this thing up in the air and have a look at the, the physical module. So we're looking under the back of the truck above the spare tire there and I believe that's the trailer brake control module right here. You can see the blue wire running into it. The fuel pump driver module, I believe, is above it. 
unless they call that a auxiliary module now. That probably this orange wire is the live wire and the black wire is ground. It doesn't look too corroded under here. It looks pretty clean. It is a 17, so it's not that, that old. So there are two separate components. There's the trailer brake control module, which is the part I was pointing to there a minute ago. You can see the red light green wire is the battery power in. Now, it doesn't directly communicate with the scan tool by the looks of it. It doesn't have network wiring running to it. It comes through the chassis control module, the auxiliary, and we have no communication with that, so that makes sense. Uh, these fuses are good. Fuse 19, fuse 34, but we're going to have to drop the spare tire to get at this connector and check the powers and grounds to it. G400, shared ground with the trailer brake module. Let's drop the spare tire and get at these connectors. So there are three modules that live here. I know this is the trailer brake module because I recognize the blue wire and the orange. Well, it says orange, but look at that. It's orange where the tape was exposed and it's red under the tape. Anyways, that's the trailer brake control module, that one there. But I'm not sure if this is the chassis control module. I see there's some network wiring running to it here, these twisted pair. But there's another module that lives above this one. Hmm, I'll have to find out for sure. Well, I'm confused. There's power at that wire and the ground at that wire and that purple with green trace has got key switch power, but this is not the chassis control module. This is the chassis control module here. I started looking at the connector and there's three rows and pin 26. There's not even 26 pins in this connector, but it just so happens that this is power and ground, whatever this module is. This is the brake module, I'm pretty sure. I labeled it. But this one here is the connector we got to check now. I didn't think it would have such large pins. Why has it got two of these modules? They both appear to be different. The different part numbers 7305 and 2215. I labeled them so I wouldn't mix them up. Well, let's repeat the tests on this connector here. I'll get a connector view. So that's definitely the chassis control module connector. And pin 1 and 13 are battery power and ground. And that's these two pins down here. There's 13, and there's 1. And it doesn't light a headlight. Nothing in these other two pins at all. I'll double check that. I think this pin 1 is power. Let's try this ground. Nope. Let's try this one. And this ground. Nope. Let's make sure my headlight still works. Yeah. Now double check. I can't get this stupid diagram to print for some reason. Don't see any compromised wires here. Now this is pin 1, and this is pin 13, it's actually stamped in there. We don't have pottery power here. Let's look at the diagram again. Doesn't show any connections between the fuse box 
and this module doesn't show any connections well let's try something let's put the headlight in here this is power and pin 13 is ground let's see if we got a ground at least Yes, we do. But if I put this one over to here, to that ground, I don't have power on this pin. Pin 1. And that comes from... Fuse, the 10 amp fuse, fuse 19. I gotta double check. We gotta double check. So we got no power to pin one, which is battery power from that uh, 10 amp fuse. We got power to pin 25, which is that corner there, the red lead going in there. That's ignition power. It's the head lighting the headlight behind my meter here. But and we got a good ground on pin 13. So we got to investigate where this comes from. I know the fuse was good, but I got to double check. So I decided to put a voltmeter across here because it fails a load test and won't run a headlight. And with the voltmeter connected to that pin, we read 6.6 .6 volts. You can see it's fluctuating. So I'm going to record this on a volt graphing multimeter and then try moving the harness because it doesn't show any connectors anywhere in the circuit look at it, it's changing all by itself I'm gonna set this up so the interesting thing is there's like a pulse every 10 seconds or so because the one screen is 10 seconds I'm going to try and manipulate some wiring to see if I can see a change in that. change so it goes directly from this fuse 19 10 amp fuse no connectors in the line so I'm gonna have to look underneath that fuse panel I think that'd be the best place to go I manipulated the wiring harness all along the outside of the frame while I'm graphing that voltage and it didn't change so but the strange thing is it's pulsing like that hmm I wonder if there's a problem with that junction box so I pulled fuse 19 while I monitored the voltage and you can see it drops to zero so that's definitely the correct fuse and the fuse is not burnt it's not corroded it's like brand new this is fuse 19 right here this 10 amp now I don't know which connector comes out of maybe this one here gotta get a light under here so in this schematic it shows it coming out of terminal G4 and connector J2 at the underhood fuse box and it goes straight to that pin 1 at the chassis control module and I have no power there so I'm monitoring the voltage I got a picture of the bottom view of this uh, fuse panel 
and I've got the voltmeter set up here with long leads reading the voltage and I'm wiggling the harness and the fuse panel and nothing changing definitely if I pull that fuse out I lose the voltage altogether so got to figure out which one of these connectors is is the connector in question and if it's if the power is leaving here I guess I'm pulling this fuse box out So there's the underside of the fuse box. It looks pristine. According to this diagram, it's J2. And according to this diagram, everything's labeled X. So I'm assuming J2 means X2. So that would be theoretically that connector. Now is this the this is the bottom of the fuse panel, so that could be this connector here should be able to tell by the direction that the wiring harness is running. This harness, this harness connection runs off to the engine. Oh, but it goes down to, oh brother. I wonder if they're labeled. Gotta get a connector view to figure out which one of these pins I wonder if we still have battery power on this. Got a, got a main feed here. I don't know if we still have battery power on here. Let's check with the test light. That fuse, because that was battery power. So I should be able to find if I got battery power at the appropriate terminal on the bottom of the fuse panel. Yes, I'm working on this live. I've got the key off now though. So G4 on J2, J2, G4, red, white wire. To find a picture of connector X2, which is labeled J2 in the schematic. X50A fuse block under hood, X2, it says it's green. All right, so there is a green connector there. Looking at the fuse box, this one is green. This on the uh, so this is the bottom of the fuse box on the fuse where the fuse box plug is in. It's this one, but it says it's pin G4. So let's go down here and see that G4 powertrain main fuse relay circuit 5290. That's not the right circuit number. That's 2040. Man, I hate this misinformation. G4, J2. G4 is powertrain main fuse. Well, I'm going to look around. Inside of this box it says it's X5. And over here it says J5. Well, let's see if J5, which is, doesn't say what color the connector is. Oh, NA, I think that means natural. That would be the white connector. And G4, battery positive voltage circuit 2040. That's it. Oh my God. So now I got to figure out which pin that is. And that's in, says here natural NA, or no color assigned, or no, not available. Well, by process of elimination, let's look at the other connectors. X1 
is brown. I'm going to write this down. X1. X2 is green. X3. Is gray. And then there's a black and a white. X4 is black. So that it leaves. X5 as uh, not assigned or or natural, whatever you want to call it. Chrysler refers to connectors as natural, not to be racist or anything. NA. So that is the connector. But now this is a view looking at the connector. So I'm going to see if I can identify this lead. So the white connector is connected to this one here. You can see the white one underneath there. And GM doesn't know the alphabet. They go A, C, D, E, F, G. So this is A, C, D, E, F, G. That's G6, the cavity, 5, 4. So that's G4. And that comes from the fuse. And that should be powered up. And it's not. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right terminal. The test light works. That should be powered up, I believe. That comes from that fuse, so it's acting like the fuse, fuse block has died. So we're going to identify this terminal in the relay center here. So we've got to look at this. Wait a second. No, that's the wrong one. Damn, mirror image. It's this one. Because this flips over, so this one goes down here. So A, C, D, E, F, G. So it's that terminal there. Why do you have to make things so difficult when I drop my test light? So it should be this terminal. And that's live. I'm going to make sure by pulling that fuse on the other side that that's the right terminal. Now I'm more confused. It goes A, C, D. Oh, A, C, D, E is in the middle, F, G. So this one here, A, C, D, F, G, 4. That's powered up. And this one's powered up. 1, 2, 3, 4. Unless it's going the other way. We could be counting this one as number 1. I got the fuse out now. One, two, three, four, and that pin is dead. Okay, let's put the fuse back in and see if that pin is live after. Okay, so that is the pin. It's one, two, three, four. It's this fourth pin down. And we got power coming out. If I pull fuse 19, that power goes away, so fuse box is good. So now we got to identify that pin in here. Should be this one right here. One. No. Got to look at this as a mirror image. Stupid fuse panel keeps tipping back into place. So it should be one, two, three, four. That one there. Two, three, four.
no, let's see. One, two, three. So it's one, two, three, four down. So it's this white connector. One, two, three, four. It's that pin right there. So I'm going to establish a terminal between here and here. Make double sure, triple sure. This is so confusing because of the mirror image. You're looking at the whatever. Just confusing. So with a jumper in there, it shows 8.75 volts now. Interesting thing is it's not fluctuating like it was before. So that is this harness right here. Hmm. Wow. I don't know what to do next. So I connected my headlight to the output side of that, and you can see it supports current to run a headlight here. So there's somewhere between here and that trailer brake the chassis control module that, that that particular wire is compromised. And there's no connectors in between. So I think I'm gonna try and open the open the harness underneath along the frame in a nice spot and see if we can find this red white wire. So as luck would have it, there's only one red white wire that I can see in this harness. You see all the twisted pairs there, those are the CAN bus wires. But the wire is good. Or I don't know if the wire is good to hear, but I, I can test it here and check it for continuity to the back. I got the voltmeter connected to it and it doesn't support a load. Yeah, that was manipulating or changing. Let me watch that while I manipulate the harness here. Hmm. You're gonna have to move it. So if I move this harness where it goes over this body mount here, it seems to change a little bit. Right in there. I wonder if the problem is right up here. Well, I'm gonna test the wire here to see if I've got power here. I'm going to pierce the wire, check for power. So I've got a Phil's probe attached to the uh, wire in the middle of the vehicle and I've got the voltmeter set up and I'm going to put an ordinary test light on the wire and you can see it pulls the voltage to ground. So that means the problem is ahead towards the front of the truck. I think. Is that conclusive? It doesn't light a test light here, so... I'm trying to flex these wires. I think it would be more cost effective to run a new wire from the fuse box down to the mid mid frame here. I'm going to put a jumper wire in there temporarily, reconnect everything and make sure it communicates. Okay, so I got a jumper wire connected from the battery positive to the fills probe in the middle of the, of the harness. The fuse pa panel reinstalled, all the modules reconnected at the back. And we're going to see if we have communication with the chassis control auxiliary. And it appears we do. Look at that, no code. So that wire is compromised somewhere along the frame between the middle of the truck and the fuse panel. So tomorrow I think I'm going to run a new wire where it leaves the fuse panel down because I've taken that harness out from over top of the frame and 
over top of the body mounts. Let's clear all codes read by code scan. Because I had harnesses unplugged, modules unplugged. It'd be nice to find that spot. I'm wondering if one of those uh, open circuit uh, radio frequency generators might might help you find that open in the circuit. I have one, but not here. It's talking to the trailer interface control module. 21 modules now. Okay. Let's do another code scan now and see what came back. Remember the ABS was complaining about loss of communication. Yeah, ABS is good now. Yeah, we had a U0137 in the ABS module. Hmm, control module ignition accessory circuit open circuit. Maybe that code didn't clear. Current DTC since power up. No, that means it's current. That's a new code. Twenty one controllers. Let's clear this one. Hmm. Well, we'll have to look into this code now, but that seems to have corrected the trailer brake control problem. Let's see if we can talk to the trailer brake control module. We got the auxiliary trailer interface control module. Let's try that. See, I don't know if it's actually, you know, you see it. There's different levels of systems. This one uses the uh, chassis control module auxiliary for trailer brake, and the trailer brake module is just a trailer brake control data. Anyways. So here's the trailer brake control data out of the auxiliary control module it's live now so I'm sure that's the problem we'll fix that wire tomorrow and uh, give it back to the customer